All right, you guys, give me just a minute. All right, good afternoon. Welcome to Prophetic Mentoring and Counseling. I'm your host, I'm so glad to be here. Um, I shared with you guys yesterday what uh, the topic for today was gonna be. And we're gonna go ahead and get right on into that. Let me um, pull my stuff together. Uh, no scripture, let me get my scripture. We're coming out of 1 Samuel. Chapter 3, I had it printed out, but I left it downstairs. Um, what was going on? going to open up in 1 Samuel chapter 3. I'm going to read the text to you, and then we'll get into um, our um, topic for this week. And this thing is so slow. I deeply apologize. It's taken so long. I had to print it out and didn't feel like going back downstairs. Anyway, I'm going to read this to you out of the NIV version. This is 1 Samuel chapter 3. Welcome, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, thank you for joining in. Thank you, Loretta. 1 Samuel chapter 3. And I'm going to read the entire chapter. Now, it's like 19 verses, but I read fairly quickly. But I want to make sure that I establish. Um, you know, you don't want to assume that people know. It may be a popular topic to some, but you don't want to assume that everybody knows. So I'm just going to read this really quickly. First Samuel chapter 3. I'm going to read this out of the NIV. Hello, God bless everybody. All right. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. And one night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak, that he could barely see was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Very uh, strategic um, uh, positioning for Samuel. And we'll get to that in a little bit. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am. You called me. Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. And then the Lord called Samuel and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am. You called me. My son, Eli, said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Verse 7, my, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. At a third time, the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. Verse 9, so Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there. I love that. Verse 10, 1 Samuel verse um, three, chapter 3, verse 10. The Lord came and stood there calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. All right. And so the Lord said to Samuel, see, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. At that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family, okay, from the beginning. For I told him, verse 13, that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons blasphemed God and he failed to restrain them. Make sure you hold on to that thought. Therefore, verse 14, I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. At this point, God was not receiving anything. Amen. The sins had escalated to a point where God was releasing judgment. And, it, it, you know, you need to pay attention to that because many times we, I call it hyper grace. We, we, we frustrate the grace. Amen. Just because God has not dealt with it doesn't mean God is not going to deal with it. And so at this point, God was frustrated because Eli knew about what was happening. He would not deal with the issue. He would not confront it. He would not uh, uh, restrain his sons. And so God said, what you won't do, I will do. And at this point, there's no, he said, there's nothing you can give me to make me change my mind. This is God. Okay. So moving on to verse 15, Samuel lay down into the morning and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision, but Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son, Samuel answered, here I am. Verse 17, what was it he said to you? Eli asked, do not hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so severely, if you hide from me anything that he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then, then Eli said, 
He is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. Verse 19, final, well, 20, 21, praise God. The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up. He let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh and there he revealed himself to Samuel in through the word. So the topic that I gave you all yesterday is, um, let me scroll down to see what the topic was is, um, let's see, is when your Eli misses it, when your Eli misses it. And as I stated uh, yesterday when I posted this message, and let me just put a disclaimer out there, I am not anti-leadership. I am a leader, amen, uh, in the body of Christ. I am not anti pastoral and I'm not none of that uh, but I do realize and recognize that there are um, uh, those who are serving in leadership uh, amen who may not feel as if their leader uh, is, is able to identify the callings and I you notice I'm using my words very carefully because I don't want anybody to mistake what I'm saying um, you know there may be occasions and I've counseled some of you I have spoken with some of you we have emailed back and forth correspondent through you know uh, communication that there have been instances where you have felt as if you know your leader has either failed to recognize the gifts upon your life or see the gifts on your life and refuse, amen, to help cultivate, develop it, or, or even give place for the gift to be exercised. And there is a frustration that comes along with that. Um, there is a tendency to abandon the ship. And so what I want to share with, uh, what I want to share uh, with you, Apostle Natalie, God bless you, sis. What I want to share with you, I want to give you some wisdom from the word of God. Uh, just some prophetic counseling. That's what I do here. And, and for those of you who are new to the group, I welcome you here. But I want to make this point. When people see the word prophetic, they think, oh, the woman of God is going to tell me I'm great and I'm ready to go to the nations. I'm not a prophesier. I am a prophet. I am also an apostle. But my goal here is not to tell you, you know, not to forecast your next season. My goal here is to fulfill my Ephesians 4, 11 through 13 mandate, and that is to equip the body of Christ, to exhort, to teach, amen, to bring us into the unity of the faith, amen, where we can grow, where either if you're serving in senior leadership or secondary leadership, or maybe you just got saved, amen, you, you will learn how to navigate through the courses of life, you will learn how to handle um, situations, conflicts, amen, through biblical counsel, through the word of God, amen, you will learn how, amen, to, to get along with people. You will learn how to navigate through seasons when you're feeling some kind of way and you'll learn how to distinguish between what God wants you to do and what your flesh wants you to react, uh, what your flesh wants you to do. So that's my goal here is to teach, train, mentor, equip. You know, I'm not here to put nobody in positions or ordain anybody. This is not the forum for that. Now, if you remember my church, then we take it to another level because there's a greater level of intimacy there. But for those of you that I'm mentoring from afar, those of you that are part of this group, that's my assignment here is to use the word of God, hear what the Father's saying through his spirit and, and help coach the people, guide the people through inspiration of scripture to get you to the place of maturity so that when you're dealing with situations like this or you know somebody who is, then you will be equipped uh, with the wisdom, with the skill in the word. You can rightly divide the scripture and say, hey, woman of God, man of God, here's what I feel you should do or this is what has worked in scripture in a situation like that. So that's why I'm here. So I don't want to discourage anybody. Well, she didn't tell me I'm going to be great today. Let me just get that out the way and tell you, you are just awesome. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. God thinks the world of you and you are called for such a time as this. So let's get past that. Amen. And let's talk about what is really on the heart of God for his people. There are, as I stated earlier, there are many people who are serving uh, in leadership, serving leadership or serving in ministries. Let me say that. Uh, who feel slighted? You know, feel some kind of way. Well, you know, I got these, I have these gifts. I'm called, amen. I'm anointed uh, through, you know, there's been confirmations on my life or what have you, but my set leader, you know, my, my, whoever, my pastor, my overseer, my bishop, whatever is having, is, 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 is not seeing that in me. You know, how, how do I respond? Here's the question. God bless everybody. Here's the question. And I, I hear some of your frustration. Some of you, you know, I've spoken to, and I, I, I get it. Not only, you know, I've pastored now for 14 years, senior pastor for 14 years, but I served for 11 years. OK, so I understand it from both sides. I get it. You know, I'm not one of those who have arrived, which none of us have, uh, and just forget about the journey. You understand what I'm saying? You know, the greatest thing that you can take from a journey is to be able to reach back 
and pull somebody else up through what you've gone through, mistakes and all. So even in some of the mistakes that we've made, that I have made, can be a source of wisdom whereby we can reach out to the next person and say, hey, I, I went through that. I, I felt the same way you felt, but let me, I paid for it. You understand what I'm saying? I paid for acting out of my flesh. I paid for leaving the ministry because I was in my feelings. I paid for putting my mouth on a man or woman of God. You understand what I'm saying? So you, through our mistakes, they can even be sources of wisdom that we can use to help the next generation, to help our brothers and our sisters. Amen. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about when you are feeling frustrated. Now I've got my little fan going because y'all know I can get a little overheated. You know what? Let's talk about when you feel frustrated. When you know you're called, you know, and this is a prophetic group, so I'm assuming you know that God has gifted you with the gift of prophecy. You have the ability to prophesy. You, some of you may be prophets. Amen. But you're serving. You may be serving in a ministry where um, maybe your giftings are not being recognized or maybe you're not being provided with a platform to practice your gift. And that can be for many reasons, okay? But today's reason is when you are serving an Eli, serving under an Eli-type ministry and under an Eli-type leadership, and you feel the frustration, okay, of knowing that you're called and not knowing what to do with it and not having anyone in a position to help nurture, to help cultivate, to help train, and to help release you in, the, in that gifting. What do you do? What do you do? Do you just pack up and go? Do you badmouth the leadership? Do you start your own church? You know, what I'm you know, what do you do when you are in a situation like this? Like Samuel. Samuel was in a situation to where, uh, and let me just give you some history on this, okay? And again, I'm not going to assume that everybody knows because some people don't. You know, we're all in different places in terms of our Bible knowledge, Bible understanding. Uh, you know, Samuel was, uh, you know, the 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 the. The, the product or the fruit of intercession. And, and those of you, and I feel like we're going to have to postpone our lamentation study group for another week because I think some of you are just kind of getting into that. So I'm, I think I'm going to give you guys another week because I really want to have a strong discussion on prophetic intercession. But anyway, Samuel was a, was a byproduct. <laughs> Bless you, Karen. He was a byproduct of um, intercession, prophetic intercession. His mother, Hannah, amen, was under duress. She was, you know, married to Elkanah. Elkanah was also married to Penina. And, and she could not have children. And she took, you know, this thing out on Elkanah. And he said, woman, well, what can I do? I, you know, I can't make you have children. And, and, and so there was a dynamic going on there. Amen. And so she went to the temple. About the time when it was time to present uh, offerings to the temple, she went to the temple and she prayed. And you all can read this in the, in the beginning of 1 Samuel. I just want to highlight this and so that we'll know where we are. And, and so she goes to the temple and she comes into contact with Eli. Okay, and, and so Eli says, you know, woman, are you drunk? It's too early. And, and she said, I'm not drunk. And she begins to pour out her complaint. And so Eli releases a word with not even knowing what he said. Okay, and, and so Hannah acted upon that word. And the next thing you know, here comes Samuel. So Samuel is not just uh, a child. He is a proper child. He is the fruit of prophetic intercession. And so when Hannah makes a vow to the Lord, God, if you do this thing for me, you know, like how we do, God, if you bless me with this job, I'll X, Y, Z, or if you give me this spouse, and y'all know how we do, praise God, we get it and completely forget every vow you made. But in Hannah's case, she, um, she, uh, praise God, am I recording this? She, um, she followed through with the vow. When she became pregnant with Samuel, she raised him, she nursed him, and I believe when Samuel was about eight years, eight years old, or eight days old, I can't remember exactly what it was, she brought him and she gave him to Eli. Now, I need, to, I need you to understand something right here. You know, you in your mind, first of all, you're the man who said I was drunk. You're the man who could not discern uh, what God was doing in my life, what season I was going through, and I, I want to show you something here. I want to show you people of God that, you know, many times we look for, we look from leadership. What you can only get from God. And I believe that's why so many of us, and I'm speaking as a leader, just being in an honest place. There are so many right now who are so um, disenfranchised. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Because you've expected something. You expected your man of God, your woman of God to pick you up in this particular season. You expected them to, to feel, you know what I'm saying? You expected them to discern what you're going through and, and what you're dealing with. And, and you know what? Sometimes that's not the case. In some cases, they're just like Eli, just oblivious, you know, to what's going on because this brother couldn't even discern what was happening in his own house. 
Hello. And then there are other cases where God would deliberately blind that leader because what he wants to get to you, he wants to give it to you directly and personally. And so we've got to abandon um, the frustration that comes along with my pastor didn't know I was depressed. My apostle didn't know. You know, you've got to learn how to abandon that thought. OK, because in, in Hannah's case, listen to me, people of God, if Hannah would have said, well, man of God, you could even tell I was depressed. You could even tell I was about to divorce my husband. And now, you want, you know, I'm supposed to give my child to you. Listen, if she would have allowed that type of thinking to to influence her actions, my God, she would have aborted the prophetic destiny on Samuel's life. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? If she would have focused on the fact that Samuel, excuse me, Eli thought she was drunk and said, there's no way I'm about to give my child to you. I have prayed for this thing. I have believed God for this. I fasted and sold. I mean, come on, somebody. I, I, I've gone through, waited all these years. I fought with Penina and now I got to give it to the man of God or to the, you know, I got to submit this gift, this grace, this whatever. There's no way. So in seasons like that, it's very vitally, essentially important that you learn how to govern your thinking and not allow, amen, the frustration to, uh, to influence what God is expecting you to do. Because what God is doing in you is far beyond Eli. And if you look in the scripture, and I taught on this a while back, I don't know if I taught you guys this or if I preached it, I'm not sure. But if you look at the scripture, it says she looked past Eli. You understand what I'm saying? And so when you're so focused on what they won't do and what he won't do and what she won't do, you, you, you haven't looked past it. You've got to grow your eyes. You've got to, when I say eyes, I mean vision. You've got to grow your vision. I mean, you've got to grow your insight past what the leader is doing. Because in some cases, God is deliberately, listen to me, God is deliberately shutting down their, 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 their ability to pick certain things up in your life. And in, and in many cases, is to protect you. And in many cases, is to protect you. And I hope I can revisit that thought if I don't, I hope the Holy Spirit will bring that thought back to me a little later on. So, I want to build this for you. I want to build as an apostle, let me build this case. I'm going to present the case, amen, and to show you how, amen, to deal with your Eli. And, and, and you know, in this case, I'm talking about if your Eli is a leader. But I, listen, your Eli may be your spouse. Your Eli may be your supervisor, some person of authority that's just missing it. You understand what I'm saying? And so you've got to learn how, amen, the Bible talks about bringing captive our thought. You've got to learn how to police your mind. Don't just allow, amen, don't just allow your thoughts to. You know, listen, you ever heard uh, the, the thing, this is driving me crazy? You ever heard people say that? And you may sometimes have said, this is just driving me. Because you know what? Your thoughts can drive you. The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So your thoughts can drive you to some places, people. I'm telling you, your thoughts can drive you to places you don't want to go. And it will take the power of God to get you and bring you back to where you're supposed to be. So you've got to be, you have, you have to be intentional about policing and guarding your thoughts, casting down imaginations and every high thing, high thing, a high thought, this thing is taking, is taking rank in your mind. And if you listen, and if you allow that thing to continue, you, that thought is going to turn into a manifestation. That thought is going to turn into a deed. So you have to be very careful when you're feeling some kind of way how to police your thoughts. And the Bible says bring them captive. In other words, that word means to arrest it, handcuff it, chain it, tie it down. Devil, you a liar. I, you know, I, I know what I'm feeling is true. Don't deny your feelings. Don't say, well, that will hurt me. Yes, it does. It does hurt. You feel abandoned. You feel overlooked. You feel, amen, uh, forgotten or whatever you're feeling. You, you, you feel some kind of way. Praise God. Don't, uh, don't ever lie to yourself about how you feel. You know what I'm saying? You feel the way you, the way you feel is how you feel. Now, whether you're justified in those feelings or not, that's another story. But you can't deny how you feel. Okay? Don't betray yourself like that. If you're feeling some kind of way, you need to acknowledge, I'm angry. I'm upset. One of my daughters texted me a while ago. Mom, I'm angry. And I said, you know what? You know, it's okay. It's okay to be angry. There are going to be circumstances in your life that are going to evoke certain emotions out of you. Let it have its moment. And then when you when that moment subsides, then you stand up and take action. 
But don't abandon your feelings and don't betray your feelings because your feelings are telling you what you're feeling. They're honest with you. Your feelings will be honest with you than you are, be truth be told. So anyway, you're going to move past the frustration you're having, right? This is what Hannah did. Hannah moved past the fact that this man can't see past his eyes. You know, he's calling me junk. He has no idea the pain. He has no idea the suffering. He has no idea the ridicule, the harassment, the torture. He has no idea. But God is telling her, amen, he's in, God is, is inspiring within her that when you have this child, despite what you see in Eli, I want you to dedicate that work to the service. And she does it. So when you look at Samuel's and Eli's relationship, Samuel was not just a church member. Samuel was on assignment. Understand this. He was on assignment. And let me tell some of you this. Now, I, 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 let me help you. Let me help you. Not every assignment that God is, is requiring of you is going to be one that makes you get up and dance and knock a pew over. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna, they, there will be assignments that God is requiring you to, to, to embrace in certain seasons of your life that will make you wonder if God loves you. You understand what I'm saying? Search the scriptures. God gave Hosea an assignment. Go and marry a prostitute. You understand what I'm saying? God gave Moses assignment. Go and rescue my people. God knew full well. These is over, this, this is going to be over 2 million people. And <laughs> over half of them are a hot mess. They are rebellious. They're stiff neck and hard. So I, I want you, you know, because I know what the prophets are telling you. God, it's about to be great. And you, and you know, praise God. <laughs> I'm that person that will rise up and say, you better get into the word of God. You understand what I'm saying? You better search the scriptures because some of these assignments that God is requiring of you will make you pull your, you know, it, 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 symbolically, metaphorically, make you want to pull your hair out and you, you'll find yourself asking God, God, are you mad at me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm about to teach on a series of, in, in, on um, Jonah and Nineveh, a four-part series, and really break that down. But there'll be some seasons that God will require you to sit under certain ministries, under certain leadership, and you, I'm telling you, you will wonder if God is mad at you, did God is, is are you under judgment? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Are you, did you miss God? You know, God, is this you? You understand what I'm saying? Because, you know, because in seasons like that, people of God, God is looking past what you, what, he's looking past your convenience. And he's looking at what you need for this next season. What Samuel needed, listen to me very carefully. What Samuel needed, bless you, Tracy. What Samuel needed, listen to me, uh, people of God, because this is going to bring your mind back in. This is going to make some sense to you. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you expressly. What God wants to impart in you, what God needs to impart in you, may only be learned in Eli's house. You understand what I'm saying? Under Eli's tutelage, under Eli's authority, under Eli's rank, shadow, wing, whatever you want to call it, mantle. What you need to be effective in your gift, in your calling, in your assignment, in your whatever you're called to do, may only, listen, it may only be imparted in Eli's house. We talk about David and, and um, Saul all the time because as I stated, I can't think of a better example in terms of how God raises up leaders. When you look at the assignment that Samuel had on his life, he could not have, have matured or embraced his full prophetic mantle. And Samuel was a mighty prophet. Samuel, amen, raised up kings. Hello, somebody. Samuel raised up kings. Samuel, amen, established the first school of the prophets. Samuel established five schools. So this brother had a strong prophetic uh, 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 grace on his life. He had a strong governmental, not just a prophet. He was not a prophesier. <laughs> he had an authority from God to raise up, to train, to equip, to call. He all, listen, he had, he had an authority and a mantle to even deal with witches. Had Samuel not have grown up in the house of Eli, he would not have been equipped to execute his office as prophet to the nation. He would not have been equipped to call David. And let me tell you something. Oh God. Sometimes the call is a part of the call. In other words, Samuel's call 
was also the call for David. You understand? Samuel's call was also the call for Solomon. Samuel's call was also the call for the Lord Jesus Christ. Understand the connection to your call. It's not just about you being great and you running around. You know, my God, can we just get past the, the entertainment part of it and the theatrical? And can we just get down to kingdom business? Your call is greater than you. God needs you in place to get other people in place, to get other people in place, to get other people in place. If Mary had not been in place, what would have happened with Jesus? If, you know, what would have happened with the apostles? What would have happened in the early church? Well, you know, if, if my God, it, it, it's bigger than you. It's bigger than how you feel about Eli. It's bigger than the fact that you didn't get to sing your song. It's bigger than the fact that they didn't give you a microphone and let you prophesy. It's bigger than the fact that you weren't invited to be a part of the conference. It's bigger than that. Understand the frustration that you are dealing with with Eli is bigger than he, God has a time to deal with Eli. You hear what I'm saying? God has a time. There's no need for you to pray about it. Well, I'm taking Eli to the Lord. I'm taking baby. God, Eli has already been taken to the Lord. God told Samuel from the very beginning, I'm about to deal with him. And let me tell you something. This is how you, you test the posture of your heart. And those of you who know me, you know I always say this. You better check your heart. I don't care how anointed you are. My church knows this. I am not impressed by a gift because I can prophesy. I can do all of that too. Not impressed. You understand what I'm saying? But when you can, when you can demonstrate maturity of character, integrity of character, when you're in the heat of your trial, now that right there raises my eyebrows. I'm like, now that's a bad girl right there. That's a bad boy right there. When you can stand through the fires of hell, people are talking about you, people are praying against you, people are dissing you, betraying you, and you can still lift your hands up and say, my, for God I live, for God I die. Though he slay me, yes, will I trust him? Now, honey, you got my attention. When Stephen was able to withstand being stoned, even though he was doing the right thing, there will be times you will be stoned in ministry, in relationships, in life, in your career, in your family, with your children. There will be times you will be stoned even when you do the right thing. And did Stephen stop? What he was doing and turn around and fight against his accusers? No, no. Stephen continued to lift up the bloodstained banner of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he did that, Jesus stood. Stephen stood so flat-footed. I'm going to encourage somebody. Stephen stood so flat-footed that he shifted. I feel the presence of God. He caused, the, he caused Jesus' position in Scripture. And now you know God's word says forever settled in the heavens. My word changed not. Neither is there a shadow turning in me. Heaven and earth will pass away before my word pass away. Stephen's stance in the time of opposition, in the time of... of um, of uh, opposition in the time of uh, persecution because he stood so flat footed Stephen caused Jesus's position to shift the Bible said he's seated at the right hand of the father his faithfulness listen to me somebody your faithfulness in the season of persecution in the face of fire in the face of uh, 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 hardship and I'm, I'm telling you as a living witness if you will stand flat footed you will cause God to do things in your life that are not even found in scripture I'm telling you <laughs> I, listen I am a living witness. You will cause God to do things in your life that hadn't even been validated in scripture. God will do a new thing because your faith and your steadfastness has provoked him because he won't let you back him up against the wall. God will never let you outgive him. Never. He will never let you outdo him. God will never do that. <laughs> Good God almighty. Praise God. So, so, so you find that you, you have Eli's, uh, um, and Eli, the Bible tells you that Eli's eyes were dim, right? I think the King James Version says he was, his eyes were dim. NIV said that he, uh, um, his eyes were weak. Same thing. What does that mean in the realm of the spirit? Listen to me carefully. When you're unable to hear, when you shut down your ability to hear God, there will be a direct correlation between your ability to hear God and see God. Okay? When you shut down the ability to hear, because listen, he's not hearing the cries of people that you'll find later in scripture. His sons were prostituting the women at the temple. I mean, there was a lot going on with Eli and his children. And he turned a deaf ear to the cries of the people. He turned a deaf ear to the righteousness of the word of God. Amen. To the execution of of the office of a priest. He turned a deaf ear to it. And when he turned a deaf ear to it, it also shut down his eye gate. This is why it's so important 
it's so important that you guard your ear because what's in your ear is going to affect what you see. Can I say that again? What you allow in your ear gate will affect what you see. Let me give you an example. Let's just say you at work and, and you know, there's some things going on in the workplace, you know, a little off, but it's okay. You can deal with it. But the minute you get in the break room and one of your coworkers say, girl, so-and-so is acting some kind of way today, or did you see so-and-so? Now that thing has, it, it has planted a seed. Now you just had a passing thought. But when that thing entered into your ear gate, now it's, take, it's looking for root. Anything coming to your ear, it goes into your spirit, it looks for root. And Jesus talked about, amen, the grounds of a man's heart, the rocky soil, the fertile soil, the, the wayside. I mean, you, you know, you can read that. And, and every time you allow a word to enter into your ear gate, it's going to take root. And when it takes root, it's going to affect the way that you, it's going to affect the way that you react. And it's going to affect what you see. So now after you heard what the coworker said, so-and-so is acting a hot mess in a break room and this and so forth. So now the next time you see so-and-so, you're looking at them through a different eye. Okay? A different eye. You're looking at them through not just the passing thought, but you're looking at them through what so-and-so said. And so when Eli shut down the cries of the people, the women who were being uh, 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 abused, amen, sexually abused, when Eli shut down that, uh, that ear to that, amen, to the cries of the people, it affected his vision. It, you know what? If you don't believe it, try it for yourself. And some of y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. You were doing fine until you had a conversation with so-and-so. Now you're looking at everybody funny. You were doing fine. And you know what? Let me just flip that around. There are people that have been in strong relationship with you. And the minute they get connected with so-and-so, they start looking at you funny. They start talking to you funny. Or you know what? They just don't. They just stop. And you ask yourself, well, what happened? What? Because of what somebody said. Because of what they're allowed to filter into their ear gate has affected vision. So I just wanted to bring that point out. Anyway, so the Bible says Eli's eyes were becoming weak. That he could barely see and he was lying down. And this is the danger. First your ear gate is contaminated. Then the enemy comes for your vision. Because without a vision the people perish. And I'm not talking about your goals and dreams in life. I'm talking about if you can't see what God is doing. It will frustrate you, depress you, discourage you. And all you want to do is lay down and die. You understand what I'm saying? So here you find Eli. The Bible says laying down in his usual place. Amen. And so it was at this time. That the Lord said, this is the set time for me to call Samuel. And I'm saying it to some of you. That some of you, you're waiting. Well, God, when are you going to deal with, with, with my Eli? God, when, when, when is it going to be my turn? When are you going to, uh, uh, you know, give me this opportunity? Or when, you know, whatever the situation. But let me tell you what the word of God says. The word of God says that your gift will make room for you. And bring you before a great man. But the Bible says your gift will make room for you. In other words, if it's a true gift, and I'm going to hit some of y'all real hard with this, okay? If it is a true gift, there is no devil or man created who can shut it down. But there may be seasons where God will deliberately and intentionally hide your gift. And this is what the Lord was giving me this morning. God was giving me this this morning uh, because I've talked to some and I know of some who are feeling very frustrated in their giftings. Well, I'm not being used and I'm not being so and so. And you know what the Lord told me? He said, because that's, he said, they were in a place for the gift to be identified. It didn't, didn't necessarily mean that that was where the gift was going to be practiced. You understand what I'm saying? God may have you in a place for your, for you to identify the gift, but it does not mean that that's going to be the same place where your gift is going to be used. And there will be also seasons where God will bring you into an awareness of what's on the inside of you and then cause that thing to shut down. Let me give you David for an example. Samuel went and made David aware there is a kingly priesthood prophetic anointing on the inside of you. So Samuel went and woke that thing up. But was the place, was Bethlehem the place for David to execute the gift? It was not the place for him to execute the gift. Why? Because first of all, the ground was, the ground, listen to me, could not contain who David was. What David had on the inside of him was greater than Bethlehem. It was for all Jerusalem. It was for the nations. 
You understand what I'm saying? And so for some of you, if you're feeling frustrated because you say, well, I got this in me, I got this in me, and you're trying to find a place, your gift will make room. The, the, in, the, the inherent nature of a gift from God is that it knows where it belongs and when it belongs. That gift, amen, will be, and I told my church Sunday, that gift will be like Balaam's donkey. It can see what you don't see. You understand what I'm saying? That gift knows how to respond to its giver. Because listen, you are just a steward of that gift. Bless you, Keila. You are just a steward. You don't own it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why the Bible says, as the Spirit of God gives utterance. And there are many today, you're trying to utter a gift that <laughs> has not been released from the owner. You don't own that gift. That gift, amen, has been loaned to you. Amen. And, and, and it, it responds to the Father. The Bible says he gives gifts. The Holy Spirit divides severally as he will. Do you understand that? So if you're frustrated with, I got this gift. Ain't nobody using me. Can't nobody give me a mic. You, then you need, to, you need to, first of all, you need to examine motives. Now, what's going on? This is what I would do. So now what's going on with this? Are you trying to prove a point? Is there an issue of rejection where you feel like the only way people are going to receive you is if you're in front of everybody flowing and, go and, and going and so forth? You know, what are the motives? If you know that you have a true gift from God, you should be content with the timing that he wants it released. And I take you back to David. When David had his gift stirred within him, identified within him, Samuel said, you're going to be king. David said, cool. David went right back to the field. He went right back. David didn't go and look for a conference. Dave, you know, listen, you got to examine. Now, listen, I'm going to deal with Eli. I don't think I took him off. The, we're still going to deal with Eli right now. We're talking about us. Hello. We're talking about us folk. When you know it's a gift that God gave you, you should never feel anxious about when it's going to be used. You should never seek to prostitute the gift for the sake of being accepted or for the sake of being celebrated. Learn how to uh, respect the gift and respect the timing of the gift. David understood how to respect the timing of his gift. And when it was time for David's gift to be executed, there was a cause. His father said, Jesse, uh, his father said, Jesse, uh, his, father, his father, Jesse said to David, go and take your brother some food, go and check on him. That was the timing of the gift to be birthed. And even then, it was only birthed on a lower level, a preschool level. It just put him in place. It wasn't time for it to be executed. It just, it, it just put him in, in line. You understand what I'm saying? I, I'm, I want many of you to learn how to trust God with the gift that he gave you. God didn't give you a gift to shut it down, to lock it down, to be suffocated, and, 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 and you, know, you just never get a chance. Believe me. There is opportunity for your gift to be used. There's a place for your gift to be used. There's a people that will receive your gift. Let God navigate that for you. Okay? I'm, I'm still talking about us. Uh, believe me, I'm going to get back to Eli. But just to kind of help some of us with the anxiety with why am I not being used? Why am I? Remember what I told you in the beginning? I served for 11 years. Served. Actively served. I'm not talking about how long I've been saved. But I actively served in ministry for 11 years. I served as a... Uh, um, board of a uh, uh, board member i served as church administrator i served as a choir member and i served as an intercessor i did not serve as a prophet or as an apostle however those callings and giftings were locked within me all along every time i got up and read the announcements the prophet was in me whenever i got up and sung my song in the alto section the apostle was in me but there were things that i needed to learn there, listen, there were disciplines that I needed that would, that would serve me in my leadership capacity, in my leadership season, that I learned on the choir, that I learned reading the announcements, that I learned in the board meetings, that I learned in intercessory prayer. Do you understand? There were disciplines that I learned. There were bruises that I had to experience that prepared me that when these things happened in my ministry, I would know how to react without offending people or, or without wounding people. There were things that I needed to learn 
disciplines, character attributes, amen, the revelations of scripture, revelations of behavior, revelations of my gift. There were times I needed to observe. Just sit, some in some seasons of your life, God will require you. He'll say, thus saith the Lord, you are a student in this season, not a teacher. Can you handle that? Can you handle when God calls you to a season of discipleship, a season of the student? And you have to know that if God is calling you, and, and this is what, you know, still talking about Samuel, but this was Samuel's season of a student. And when God uh, 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 assigns you a season of the student, you have to know how seasons work. They change. They're not perpetual. The Bible said uh, from, oh God, from uh, the Lord Jesus, um, it talked about the cycles of the earth. I believe Isaiah talked about seed time and harvest will never end. Uh, winter and spring, you know, these times they'll never end. They're, they're, it's cyclical. So if you're in a season of the student, you have to know just by the order of life that your season of, season of a leader is coming in whatever capacity God has designed for you. But before you lead, you're going to have to learn how to follow. Okay, Jesus did the same thing. He sat under those doctors and lawyers, 12 years old. He was a student. He sat under his mother. He was a student. And then it was time at 30 to be released, to be the rabbi, to be the teacher. But you don't put the cart in front of the horse. So for Samuel, listen to me carefully. For Samuel, this was a season of the student. Listen, just because God calls you to the season of the student, does not mean that you're going to have the best of the best of the best instructors. <laughs> I've had, and I'm still in school. I've got a year to go before I finish my counseling degree. And, and I've had some teachers that I just, can I just be real, that I just really didn't like. You understand what I'm saying? I, one of my instructors, he was uh, our psychology instructor. He was an atheist. He was anti-Christ. Anti -Christ, and I hated his class. It was, uh, what was it called? Developmental psychology. I hated that mess class, but guess what? In order for me to satisfy the requirements of my degree, I needed his class. So you know what? I didn't take advantage and say, well, I don't like the class. I'm not going. No, I showed up every time that my syllabus told me to be there and I completed every assignment, whether I liked it or not. Are you understanding me? I, 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 I sat and I had to listen to this man, and he wrote the book, my God. So, I mean, he knew the text back and forward. And I had to sit and listen to this man, amen, offend my faith. This is for some of you that think, you know, well, I'm, I'm in the wrong church. And uh, some of you may be. I'm just, hey, you need to go to God for that. It's not my job to tell you. But I'm just saying, some of you may be, okay? But in some cases, that may be the right church. But, you know what I'm saying? The friction and the abrasion to your spirit may be exactly what you need as a student to learn what not to do when you lead. Hello. What David learned from Saul was exactly what not to do. I know not to count a uh, seek a witch. I know not to go against the prophets. I know you understand. Sometimes in schools of uh, in your in your season in your student seasons, God is not so much teaching you what to do. In certain seasons, He's teaching you what not to do. And it will come by observation. Okay? So in this particular class with um, with the man, I'm not going to call his name, praise God. But I had to sit there and I had to endure it for a whole semester. I couldn't prematurely get out the class like some of us. Well, I'm leaving. I'm, where are you going to go? You're going to have to take that class. You can't graduate. Hello, somebody. You're not going to graduate till you pass that class. And, in, and listen, and this ain't college. It's not free. You're going to have to pay for it. You understand what I'm saying? Hello, somebody. You will pay for every failed course. And in some cases, you'll be put on academic probation. And don't nobody want to deal with that. Amen. So I had to sit and listen to this man for, what, three hours from six to nine? Three hours rattle on about why if God was, if there was such a God, why were babies born deformed? And, you know, he saw so much in science that it turned him against God. But you know what happened? He, he, got, he said something. He said something. And he said, no one has ever passed my class with an A. Nobody's ever passed my class with an A. And I said to myself, I said, and I said, I'm going to show you. You know, I've sat in this all year, semester long, and I've listened to you. Amen. It's my assignment to sit here. But I tell you what, I'm going to pass it. Amen. I'm going to blow your mind. And I'm here to let you know when that assignment came out, and that's, that's been my testimony for years. That thing floored me. Despite how he threw the book at us. And there were several of us Christians in that class. He threw, he, he deliberately offended us. 
He wanted us to quit the class. He wanted us to withdraw because our very presence, it offended him. It offended his demons. Are you hearing what I'm saying to some of y'all? There's some people that they are so hard on you so because they want you to leave. Your very presence is offending them. It is irritating their demons. Don't think I'm just talking about my school thing. I'm trying to show you something. If you can catch the revelation, this is a parable. Praise God. There are some people on the job, your supervisors, amen, that they, that your, your presence offends them and irritates them and agitates them so bad that they will do things. One of my spiritual daughters, she's a nerd. I ain't going to call your name, baby. But you, you know what I'm saying. You, you, you irritate them. Every time you clock in, their devils get stirred up and, ir ir and agitated and they start to manifest. Because they want you to quit. They want you to sabotage your career. They want you to sabotage your marriage and sabotage, amen, your, your good credit. Praise God. Sabotage your financial, personal financial economy. They want to sabotage your career and sabotage your... But you know what? You keep showing up. Keep clock in, sign in, sit down, and go, go through. Make your face hard like flint and take it. Take it. Praise God. You can endure hardness as a good soldier. David did. Saul, Samuel certainly did. And so can you. Jesus did it. Everywhere he went, he was surrounded by people questioning him. Why you got to wash your hands? Why are you doing this on the Sabbath day? And he was like, y'all don't do nothing on a regular weekday with clean hands. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So you're going to provoke devils. But is that God's sign of telling you to leave? Just because you're aggravated and I'm tired of dealing with this. I don't have to put up with this. I'm a king. Yeah, you a king. David was a king and he still had to serve Saul. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Know why God is require, requiring you to endure certain hard seasons. Every season of your life is not going to have you running and shouting and tiptoeing through tulips barefoot. There are going to be some seasons in your life that you're going to be like, God, when the righteous man cry, Lord God, will you deliver me from this, from hell? <laughs> You'll you be like, Jonah, can you please get me out of hell? You understand what I'm saying? But God will not release you until his, pur his purpose, not yours. He will not release you until his purpose has been accomplished in your life. So you might as well sit down, strap up and just go through. And come out and be great. <laughs> you understand? You just go through and come out and be great. Praise God. So, so you know, with Samuel, he had to endure serving a leader who couldn't hear God, couldn't see. He also had to, listen, he also had to experience Eli's fathering. Now, this is unfortunate because when you read on in Samuel's life, and some of you guys are going to catch this. Uh, Samuel was a wonderful, sharp prophet. Let me tell you, God loved Samuel. But Samuel failed as a father. Listen to me. Listen to wisdom. Listen to what happened in the word. When you come out of these Eli houses, you want to make sure that you take yourself through deliverance. Because even though God assigned you in that house and you learn what not to do, you learn how to lead and you learn, you know, how to hear God's voice, there could have also been a negative transference of spirits taking place there because you were submerged. You understand? I know many, uh, my God, I can almost call them out by name. I know some awesome people of God right now. I mean, strong gifts. And I know God has gifted them, but they served under some Eli leaders. You understand? They served under some Eli leaders and, and God has released them. Some of them are in their own ministries right now and their ministries are struggling. You understand what I'm saying? Because even though their giftings are sharp, their attitude sucks. Now, you know, just drop the mic. <laughs> their giftings are sharp, but their attitude sucks. They had, they, they, even though they came out of Eli's house and somebody need to catch this, even though they came out of Eli's house and they learned what God wanted them to learn, because I mean, some of them even reached out to me. Well, I'm the God, I need you to pray for me because, you know, me and my, praise God, we're not really getting along and this phrase, I don't put people's stuff out, you know, praise, y'all catch me in the spirit. And, and, and we prayed them through, you know, and I counseled them, stay there, go through. And when God released them, and God did release them, I can testify that it was a true God release. And they came out gifting sharp anointing sharp they learned what they needed to learn in that season but they came out with that Eli attitude and that's what you have to be careful of you got to be careful that when you come out of that you got to go through a season of purging and and and, and you got you know what I'm saying you got to 
Submit to deliverance. Because you can't be in something for an extended period of time and think it's not going to affect you. Now, it may not affect the gift, but it can affect your character and the way that you cut, the way that you conduct yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you, you want to, you know what I'm saying? There's so much people, people, family, friends, people got. There's so much to be considered. You understand what I'm saying? It's not just you got a gift. Let's talk about the gift. Your gift is going to work, brother. Listen, Samuel's gift worked and Eli never told him how to use it. So, you know, I'm not against, hear my heart. I'm not against learning how to use your gift. By all means, study and show, your, show yourself approved. But in learning how to execute your gift, please don't abandon the fact that you got to work on character. You got to work on your emotions. You got to work on your heart. And my best friend Natalie can tell you, you can be anointed and you can cast out every devil in, 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 in everywhere. And still go home to a broken up home. Your kids don't like you. Your husband don't like you. Your wife don't. Let me tell you. You understand what I'm saying? Don't let that. Listen. Don't let that gift fool you. Don't let your gift fool you. Okay. So let me try to wrap this up. Because it's almost. We almost had an hour. So. Um, so praise God. Samuel is in his season of the student. And. He's learning the ways of the temple. The Bible said, you know, it, it, Samuel, let me see what the, this is in verse 1 Samuel chapter 3. And Samuel was, uh, verse 2, the lamp of God had not yet gone out. And I believe the reason why the lamp of God had not yet gone out is because Samuel was in there. And I'll tell you something, there are certain ministries that God, it, you know, it, it's got, it, it doesn't have Ichabod written yet, but Ichabod is on the way. You know, it's like, it's like Ichabod is taking a slow train and it cannot, Ichabod cannot take his permanent residence over that house until he gets Samuel out of there. You understand what I'm saying? This is why, hey amen, you know, even people talk about, you know, the mark of the beast and the end time stuff. And, and, and you know, you got the saints of God worrying. And I'm like, hey, have you not read scripture that God has provided a way of escape? God, listen, let me tell you something. Do you not know what Goshen is? When God was pronouncing judgment upon Egypt, he, uh, Israel heard it, but it never touched their house because they were covered under the blood. So as long as you walk in your stuff are right, you will be able to hear that sound when the trumpet of God shall sound. Amen. And God will come and rapture his church. Now, that's just the word of God. I don't care what your theory is and how much you like living here and how much of a kingdom you built here. You know, there is a time where God will come and rapture his church, where Jesus will come for his bride. Amen. So, you know, you've got to understand that in some cases, Ichabod is on the way to certain places. There's been jobs that I've left. And as when I left, the whole place closed down. Three jobs, three places I worked at have been shut down after I left. Do you understand what I'm saying? So in this particular instance, because we're talking about timing. God was about to pronounce judgment on the house of Eli. God was, listen, God had already reserved Samuel to himself. And so even though Samuel had to be raised in the house of Eli, God still protected Samuel's heart. You understand what I'm saying? He still kept him innocent. He still kept him pure in heart. This is very important. He, he, he Okay, let me give you another instance. Even with David, David was raised uh, in, in trained rather under Saul, but David was not crafty. Now, David had other issues. But David was not crafty. Do you understand what I'm saying? So in this particular instance, judgment was about to be pronounced. Because God said to Samuel, I'm about to do a new thing. I'm about to pronounce judgment on the house of Eli, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. So now, Samuel, let me call you and equip you and let me prepare you for such a time as this. Don't ever think that God is just going to sign you somewhere and forget about you. That will never happen. He said in Isaiah, he said, can, I, he said, can a mother forget her suckling child? He said, neither will I forget you. Right. God is not going to forget you. Don't feel like, well, God, I, you know, I've been sitting on this gift for five years. I sat on mine for 11. And when it was time to go forth, let me tell you something. I thank God for those 11 years that I learned that because, you know, when it was time, to, when it's time to go forth, you don't have time to go back and, and learn. You don't have time to go back and study. Well, what does this mean? Or what? Where, you know, when it's time for you to go forth, when you take advantage of your student season and you step into your leadership season in whatever capacity that may be, you would, let me tell you, you will appreciate 
Everything you learn, even the mistakes you made, you will appreciate it because in your leadership season, you don't have time to go back and repeat that. Samuel didn't have time to go back and figure out the workings and the protocol of the temple. It's time now to gird myself up. I got to take, I got to take charge. So the Bible said that Samuel was positioned, a man, he was lying down where the ark of God was. In your serving in Eli, keep yourself, amen, covered. Stay close to the ark. Now, in that day, it was a physical ark, but now we know the ark of God, the presence of God abides on the inside. In other words, you better walk close with God when you're in seasons like that. The Bible said, Samuel, verse, this is 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 3. 1 Samuel 3, 3, very easy to remember. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. Why? Because of Samuel. There's some places that are standing up because of you. There are some churches. And you'd be like, well, God, when are you going to visit? When are you going to deal with this? And God was like, it's not time yet. I'm not finished training you. I'm not finished you know, preparing you. When, it's, when I release you, then I'll deal with the judgment, the judgment in the house. But it's not time yet. It's not time. And you got to trust God for his timing. Because you're not the only person in the church that God loves. I've seen churches, and you know, again, I don't preach, and I don't, you know, preach against churches because praise God, everybody, you, know, you just do, you do what God tell you to do. But there have been churches, and I was sitting there, and I'd be like, my God, what in the world is going on? And I'm like, God, why haven't you dealt with this? And you know what He told me? He said, because there are still people in this house that, that love me. Even they may not be serving in leadership; they have no control over the government of that church at all. But they're still upholding, they're praying, and they're interceding. And God said, because of the people. He said, if I release them from this house, he said, they'll backslide. And so God, will, some houses God will hold together, not so much because of the leaders, but because of the people in the pew. I've seen it and I've witnessed it with my very own eyes. It's so, let me, it's, <laughs> this is some powerful stuff, y'all. Let me move on, okay? We good, everybody all right? Praise God. So how do you deal when your Eli, your Eli misses it? You continue to stand. You trust the giver of the gift, which was not your leader. God gave that gift to you. And you don't own that gift. You are a steward. A steward accepts responsibility and uh, 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 executes the gift as the Holy Spirit gives you utterance or as he releases you to do so. So you find Samuel and he's in a situation, okay, Eli is a terrible father. However, he's able to father Samuel. Did anybody catch that? Eli is a terrible father, yet he's able to father Samuel. Because the grace, listen, the grace on Samuel's life preserved Eli's mind for his dealings with Samuel. In other words, ways that Eli could get away with his sons, God would not let him get away with that with Samuel. Now, some of you may say this. Why is my leader or that person so hard on me? But look at their children or look at their family members. And, you know, either say out your amen or just don't say nothing. Hello. And, and you'll notice sometimes the leadership is hard on you. You don't get away with nothing. You better be to church on time. You better pull your shirt up and pull your, I mean, pull your skirt down and pull your pants up, whatever. You know what I'm saying? The way you conduct yourself, the way you, they're so hard on you. But when it comes to their own family, their own children, they are very lax and very, you know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 very modest in that. This is what happened with, C, with, with Samuel and Eli. Eli couldn't correct his children. He couldn't father his children, but he had an anointing to father Samuel. Did you catch that? Because God knew that what I'm doing in Sam, what up God, what he, what God knew that what he was doing in that season had nothing to do with Hophni, Hophni and, and uh, what uh, Phineas, I think Samuel's son, uh, Eli's sons had nothing. That was already a, a cursed generation. God was not interested in that. God was not about to invest in that. So listen, if God don't correct you, he don't care. Hello, somebody. If he doesn't correct you, he does, he, if God doesn't correct you, he's not interested and he doesn't care. But with Samuel, Eli was able to father Samuel. Samuel, go back, son. Samuel, stay in the temple. Samuel. Now, you know, what are the dynamics in that? And how do you feel as a Samuel when you get all the instructions, you get you, you, you get all the correction, you get all the rebuke, and you're like, well, look at your son. You know, look at look at he's sleeping with everybody in the church. But the minute I look at somebody crazy, I get rebuked and sat down. 
maybe God designed it that way because of what's in you, because of what you're called to, and because your next season will require you to operate in discipline, discipline of character. By the time Samuel, Samuel stepped into leadership, Hophni and Phinehas did what their, their judgment had already been written. That was already done. Okay? But what I want you to, this is, you know, I'm trying to wind it, I'm really trying to wind this down. Trust me, I am. But what I, I want you to understand is when you're in a season like that, and, 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 you, and, and this is what I said even in the beginning, you've got to learn how to govern your feelings because I'm telling you, you'll be looking and watching and why her husband can do that, why his wife can do that, why their kids, why their grandkids get to run the choir, why they, you know what I'm saying? You, you better bring that in. And you better learn how to talk to yourself and say, look, self, now we don't know why God is allowing this right now, but it's going to work in my favor. I don't understand it. It's about to drive me crazy. But Father, help me. To see beyond my feelings. Help me to understand, God, that there's something. And Sammy didn't know what his song. Sammy didn't know. He didn't know what he was called. And, and you'll be like, and let me tell you, that's the worst feeling in the world. Is to have God work a work in you and you don't even know why God is doing it. That, you know, that's the most frustrating thing like God. You know, why am I going? I don't understand why I'm going through this. Nobody told Samuel, Samuel, here is what the plan is for your life. Your mother is going to is going to um, give you up for adoption to Eli. Oh, and by the way, Eli is a backslidden high priest with sons who are whoremongers. And you're going to have to live in a house with them. Uh, you're going to be required to uh, keep the lights, keep the lamps lit in the temple. You're going to have to learn how to deal with the people. And oh, yeah, you're going to have to put up with Eli. He can't hear God. He can't see God. You know, he doesn't know how to train you. He doesn't know how to identify your gift. But God still wants you to be faithful. You're going to still have to show up to church on time. You're still going to have to tithe. You're still going to have to attend all the board meetings. And, and, and you're just going to have to go through. You know what I'm saying? You know, nobody explained that to Samuel. And because Samuel, the reason why you have to do this is because you are going to be the chief prophet to Israel. And you're going to raise up King Samuel and you're going to install officers in the kingdom. And you're going to be able to establish schools of prophets. You're going to raise up prophets. Out of your loin, Samuel, is going to come Elijah, the mighty prophet who's going to take down Jezebel. And then when he's done, Elisha is going to... I mean, all of that was locked up in Samuel as he said frustrated under Eli and the reason why you feel so frustrated is because all you know is I'm mad I can't take it I want to get out of here and you have no idea what's in your belly you have no idea what's in your womb you can't see it because all you can see is what Eli is doing in his kids and and it, it, you can't see past nothing Eli is supposed to miss the mark Eli is not supposed to be the type of leader that you're just going to want to follow for the rest of your life. Eli is supposed to aggravate you. Eli is supposed to annoy you. Eli is supposed to provide bad examples for you so that you can learn what not to do. So what do you do when your Eli misses the mark? You watch, you observe, and you stay close to the ark. You stay close in the word. You keep your spirit charged. You keep a prayer light, amen, and you keep believing God. That God, I may not understand why I'm here, but you have a reason for everything that you have allowed in my life. And I'm not going to frustrate it. I'm not going to uh, uh, abandon it. I'm not going to jump ship. Because listen, I can, listen, I can leave Eli's house. Samuel could have, all Samuel had to do was call his mama. <laughs> okay. All Samuel had to do was say, Ma, this man is crazy. Okay. His kids are sleeping with the people in the church. Uh, they don't know how to treat the, you know, the, the holy things of God. This man won't have way talk to me. He can't see all he does is sleep and eat all the time. Uh, praise God. Cause you find later on, he fell over backwards and broke his neck. Amen. So he, you know, praise God. <laughs> so, you know, all Samuel had to do was pick up the phone and call his mama. Hannah would have been there. Hannah would have came and said, you know what? I'm coming to get my son. And guess what? Samuel could have done that. <laughs> and guess what? He would have never received the call to be the prophet to the nations. He would have never raised up David. He would have never walked with Saul. He would have never raised up the five schools. He would have been home with his mama being a real good boy. Now, I'm going to drink to that. So you can do whatever you want to do. 
You can abandon it. You can quit the job. You can quit that job. You can walk away and go through the process of reapplying and hoping you get hired, hoping you get chosen after the interview, hoping your bills get caught up, that your car don't get repoed and your house foreclosed on. You can do whatever you want. You understand what I'm saying? Or you can endure it and say, God, this is the job I asked you for. I have prayed for this position. I have sowed seed on this position. The intercessors and my leaders have prayed for me. And this is the job you gave me. I am not moving. I don't care how big and bad the devil is. I am not moving. I just have to learn how to endure it. I'll have to learn how to take my bathroom breaks and go pray in the spirit. I will learn how to navigate through this season, but I will not abandon my post. If you're in church, you've got, you can leave people, leave churches all the time. You can surely go. Nobody is holding you hostage. At least I hope not. And you can go join a church and sing and prophesy and do everything you want to do. But if that ministry was not graced with raising you and imparting into you what you needed for the next season, you missed it. And you'll be a great prophesier and a great songster and a great dancer, but you'll frustrate your season. So what am I saying? Am I saying just stay there and take it? No. If it's time for you to go, let God lead you out the door. You understand? Let him open the door. He said, for the doors are open, can't imagine shut. When it's your time to go, God will let you know when it's time to go. And he'll tell you where to go. You're not going to be out here wandering trying to figure out what you're supposed to do. He's going to tell you. He said, Elijah, get up. Go to, go to the brook. After the brook dried up, Elijah, go to the widow's there. That's the same God. Same God. If he's calling you out, he's calling you to something. Okay? He's calling you out. He's calling you into something. That's just how the order of things work. All right? So, I'm closing. <laughs> We've talked extensively today. And um, I appreciate you guys' feedback. I'm going to comment when I get done. Because if I do it now, I'm going to get distracted and stuff. Uh, but I want to encourage those of you uh, to let you know that you're not the only one. I have experienced that. Let me tell you something. There have been days, and I, I think I've shared this with you guys before. There have been days that I've cried my way to church because I knew that when I got there, I was going to get rebuked for something, whether it was something I did. And I, I mean, I didn't do stuff. <laughs> you know, it was just, it, it was just my spirit agitated certain people. And so, you know, I was picked on a lot spiritually. I was picked on. I was criticized a lot. And um, so I, I knew what my assignment was. I knew what I had to do. And I was always, I've always been a loyalist. All of my life I've been a loyalist. So if God calls me to something, I'm in it. I mean, you have to walk away. I'll never walk away. Okay. So um, I knew what I had to do. I knew I had to be on post and I did that. But I cry. I would, there would be times I would cry my way, pray and cry. I mean, and I'm like, God, why I got to pray my way to church? You know, I should be able to go joyfully and, you know, um, what the songwriter say? I was glad when it said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. That's not everybody's testimony. If we can just talk, there are some people that dread <laughs> going to their house of God because of the mistreatment, because of the spiritual abuse, okay, because of the spirits. And it shouldn't be, but it is. Find the perfect church, it's in heaven, okay? Anytime you got a church with people, you got problems, you got Jezebel, you got witches, you got demons. I mean, you know, it just, it's just everywhere. So, I mean, you can keep running. And, and, and you'll find, you'll go through your honeymoon season where, oh, this is lovely and oh, it's just wonderful and oh, I love it. And then when you start to get to knowing people by the spirit, you're going to find some things. That's just life. Church, family, job, any social gathering is going to have a host of demons and devils and witchcraft people present. That's just the way it is. You, and the sooner you can acknowledge it, the better you'll be and the better equipped you'll be able to handle whatever comes your way. Okay? <laughs> Praise God. That's a reality check for a lot of people. Um, so I would cry my way there and, and I would pray, Lord, don't let nobody say nothing to me. Just let me get into your presence because I'm dealing with my own home stuff, right? And you just let me get into your presence and, and let me, you know, so th this is why I can talk to you from the other side of the pulpit. I've been in a pew. I know what it's like. I hadn't forgotten that journey. Amen. And, you know, and, and so I know what it's like to go to the house of God and feel like you're going to be attacked. You're going to be preached on. You're going to be, I've, I've been there, honey, done that. But I stayed. And when it was time for me to go, God literally had to push me out. 
And when he pushed me out, I was still, my soul was still so tied because connections. My soul was so tied. The Lord instructed me on a seven day fast. My mother, God bless her. She's in the presence of Jesus right now. My mother, she, I had fasted for so long. And I stayed in darkness because I just, that's, it was a very um, pe uh, 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 peculiar um, season for me because I had never been out on my own. I had always been connected to this fellowship. You understand what I'm saying? And so I, I, I felt like God was thrusting me out into the unknown. And when he called me to the seven day, I'm helping somebody. When he called me to that seven day fast and I had the longest I've ever fasted was three days, three nights. Absolute. This fast was seven days. God said, I don't want you to touch nothing. My mother, she thought I was sick. She thought something was wrong with me. She tried to bring all my favorite foods, tried to make me eat. I could not even, even if I put something in my mouth, God turned the whole, um, he turned the um, taste. It tasted like sand. God took my taste buds from me. And what I learned in those seven days, when I came out of that cave, amen, God said, go and start your ministry. And I was, my God, I was scared to death. I had never done anything like that in my life ever. And I said, God, I don't know what to do. He said, he said, I tell you what not to do. He said, don't do what he said. Don't be the leader that you saw. He said, I, he said, I allowed you to, I'm trying to think of the word. He said, I allowed you to experience the type of leadership that I don't want you to become. And when I stepped into it, that's when I began to learn, oh, excuse me, I executed what I learned all those years as a student. The good and the bad. I learned what to do and I learned what not to do. But it came out of that season of being a student. And when I stepped into that, all of my gifts were unlocked. Gifts I didn't even know I had were unlocked. Because listen to me. When I was serving, in, and, I, and let me tell you, now I'm not against that ministry. I still go back in fellowship. Matter of fact, they call me when they need me. And you know what? Because I've gotten, I've been delivered from that. I'm not church hurt over it. That's my testimony. But I'm not church hurt. I'm not mad. I'm not bitter. I understand. And I'm helping somebody. I'm trying to close, but I'm going to help you. I understand that what I experienced was what I needed. Now, did I deserve it? No. But what I experienced Amen. What I experienced was what I needed. And it, it's what helped build, it, it, it is what helped build the fortitude of my character. You know what I'm saying? It took being beat, it took being, I mean, my God, to make me the strong leader by the grace of God that I am. That's why you, people say, man, you're so strong, man. You How you can stand through that? And some of y'all know some things I've stood through. Many of you don't. Amen. And still standing through by the grace of God. But it, it was what I had to endure in my student season that prepared me for what I had to face in my leadership season. And like I told you, a lot of the gifts, amen, I, you know, I was always a prophet, always a seer, but I did not have a platform. Don't you know, in those 11 years, I never got up and prophesied, thus saith the Lord, nothing, not one time. Not one time did I ever get the mic and say, the Lord said this and the Lord, not one time in 11 years, God had my gift on lockdown. But when he released me into the ground where my gift needed to be deposited, it flowed like a river. You understand what I'm saying? Some of you wonder, why am I gift? Why I can't use it? That may not be the ground for you. You're trying to plant seed in the ground that is, it, 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 the ground, the ground is, is inconducive if that's a word you know it's not conducive for what you're trying to release the ground can't hold it jesus taught us about the type of you're trying to release something into a ground and the ground can't hold it you you'll spit you're like owning and putting you're spilling seed on the ground god won't let you do it <laughs> so that's why you find when you come out of certain relationships you flourish and, and, and listen, it's not so much that you've been shut down, and some of you may have been shut down, but it could also be that the fact that that gift would not respond to that environment, especially when you're prophetic, the gift would not respond. Oh God, I can go into examples for days, for days. Elisha never knew he was a prophet until Elisha said, come follow me. He never prophesied, and the man was a bad man in business. He plowed with 12 yoke of oxen. So he was very uh, 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 successful and very productive in business, but he had never tapped into the prophetic. 
until Elijah called him. There are some leaders, amen, that don't have the capacity to unlock you. They just, they're awesome. They can tell you how to pray and they can tell you how to read, you know, the word and they can get you to sing on the choir. But in terms of unlocking who is in who you are, they don't have the capacity. And that's what I learned when God healed me coming out of that season. So talk about how Eli missed the mark. And some of you are receiving healing right now in your spirit. Uh, the Lord is revealing to me. Some of you are receiving healing in your spirit. When, 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 when God unlocks you, when you connect with the ground that will embrace who you are and can handle it and is not intimidated by it, is not, you know what I'm saying? It won't prostitute it. You, you will find a flourishing. It'll grow. Just like in a natural, you put a seed, and I'm not a horticulturalist. My mother had a beautiful green thumb. I mean, I'm envious of it. I mean, she would just have plants just growing. Yeah, man, you to give me a plant, I'd kill it dead. I mean, you know, leaves brown, roots, and I, and I water it. I put the little fertilizers. I do everything I can to it. Try to follow the little directions on the tap. It just never works for me. It just never works for me, and it frustrates me so bad. I just don't know what to do. I would love to have a house full of green plants. I mean, I think about it all the time, but I kill them all. My husband, my, you know, kids said, Mom, don't bring no more plants in the house because you kill them. You know, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, even though I love that, I don't have the gift to raise plants. I don't have the gift to maintain. I don't have that gift. So what do I have to do? Get fake plants. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Keep them dusted, praise God. But what I'm saying is, you know, many times you get frustrated with certain leaders because, um, you know, well, they don't see who I am and they don't know and they don't this and they don't that. And, and, and God in protecting you is not allowing that gift to be released there. In some cases, and this is not a blanket statement, okay? In some cases. In other cases, you may be serving in a Jezebelic leadership and your gift was going to be prostituted and God will shut it down then. And God may not want you to learn how to operate in, a, in, in contamination because that's the oil on the house is contaminated oil. And so in some cases, you'll sit there and it'll just bubble up on the inside of you and you want to tell somebody and God was like, mm -mm, hold your peace. Because you, you're in a, a crafty atmosphere and, and that, you know, you standing up will make you a part of that crowd. And God was like, no, I'm calling you separate. Come out from among them. Be separate. You know, so there's so many reasons why uh, things cannot be moving. You understand what I'm saying? But the wisdom of it all, the wisdom of it all is learning how to trust God with the timing of your gift, knowing that God owns your gift. Okay? Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father uh, of lights. You know, who gives without, uh, let me, I'm going to quote that scripture to you. Every good, somebody write this in the notes. Perfect gift. This is found in, let me think off of Google. Hold on. This is James 1, 17. Let me read the King James. Come on, pull it up. Every good and perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness. So the gift belongs to the giver. Let him orchestrate the timing of the gift. Let him orchestrate the ground where he wants the gift to be developed and trust him. Those of you serving in Eli, make it worth your while. That season will not last always. God has already released the word when he's going to deal with Eli. So you don't have to worry about, you know, what God's going to deal with, God's going to pray with, and I'm going to get the intercessors together and we're going to pray. You don't even worry yourself. He, when, he told, when he went to Eli, he told him, let me read it to you. Read it to you again for those of you just coming in. This is in 1 Samuel 3. The Lord said, verse 11, I'm about to do something to Israel. He listened, and at that time, I will carry out against Eli. Do you see what I'm saying? So for those leaders, amen, that are, are, are refusing to, to impart to you or don't have the ability to because they're contaminated, God's word has already released a judgment, honey. You know what I'm saying? So you don't have to work yourself up a new prayer formula for that. Just go to the word. So I put on my post the other day, if the answer is in the, it's in the word. You don't have to ask counsel. What I got to do? It's in the word. You just keep showing up. You keep showing up. When it's your time, God will come get you. David didn't ask, well, Lord, when are you going to come get me? God knew exactly, exactly where the sin sent you. Get up, go down to Bethlehem to Jesse's house. I got a king. Go get him. Don't feel so frustrated because it's not your time yet. It's coming. When you have matured enough to handle what the gift brings, when you understand why God has gifted you, you're going to find a shifting 
taking place in your life and not just in you because listen, I'm closing for real, for real. When the shifting happened with Eli, excuse me, with Samuel, God first dealt with Samuel and he positioned Samuel. He prepared Samuel. He exalted Samuel. And then he dealt with Eli. So if God has not dealt with you yet, don't look for him to deal with Eli in Eli's crew. Because you, you, that's not the, the way that this, that's not the protocol of it. That's not the protocol of the order. Okay? Same thing with Saul. With Saul. God dealt with David first. So how do you, I don't want to say expedite the timing, but how do you cooperate with that and not delay the time? Do what God tell you to do. Obey. Submit. Keep your heart pure. Guard what's happening in your mind. And as you cooperate with that season, then you release the hands of God to do what he needs to do in you. And once he's got you securely positioned, you're going to find judgment hit your Eli situation. Well, guys, that's it. I love you all. Thank you for bearing with me for this hour and a half that we've had. And um, I pray that I've said something to, um, to, to make you think. For those of you that receive healing, because I, I felt... Uh, that there were some of you that have left churches and some of you actually still a part of some church fellowships um, and you've been hurt by the leadership and, and this thing has caused a bitterness and a resentment and the enemy has taken advantage of that. I'm just going to kind of go with what I'm hearing God say right now. The enemy has taken advantage of that and the enemy's trying to lock you into a place of bitterness and frustration. And this thing is also opening up, opening up a door um, for wounds. The Bible, David called it, uh, you know, a wound, um, wounded in the house of my brothers, wounded in the house of my friends. Amen. Which basically means wounded in the church, church hurt. But in the scriptures, it's wounded in the house of my friends. That's the kind of spirit that comes in when you don't understand what God is doing. This is why I certify you, my people of God. If you, you know, I certify you by the mercies of God. I beseech you by the mercies of God. Study the scriptures. You understand? Study the scriptures. When you're dealing with situations, go and look into the word, the perfect law of liberty, and find out how the men and women of God navigated through these seasons. Some, some of the words, even on Facebook, and I'm telling you, y'all pray for me because sometimes I get so frustrated with some of what's being released. It really, it, I'm telling you, it's very, provo it's very provoking. You understand? But God doesn't call me to fight and battle with people, but when you see how certain profiles are releasing words over people that God, first of all, that's completely contrary to scripture, contrary to kingdom protocol. And, and when the people don't know the word for themselves now, eating it up and amen. And that's my word. And I'm like, my heart just breaks because I, you know, I feel my heart breaks because the enemy is setting that person up for another season of failure. When you receive false counsel, and I'm trying to close, but I, I got to go with God, okay? Give me a few more minutes. When you receive false counsel, what did we say about Eli? When your ear gate is contaminated, it's going to shut down your eye gate. And when you got an ear to, to words that sound good, and God's going to bring you out, and this season ended, and God said, you, were just, you just got started. You understand what I'm saying? And you don't have the stamina to endure certain seasons. Some people can't go through nothing. And then they wonder why they're always starting over, starting over, starting over on a new job, starting over the new religion. Because you, they don't have the seed. They don't know how to endure. They're, that's one thing I taught my fourth grade, uh, um, fourth grade students is I taught them reading stamina. Learn how to sit down and read for 30 minutes because when you take the uh, uh, EOGs, amen, you're going to have to sit there and read, amen, for extended periods of time. So if you, if your brain is not trained and conditioned to sit still for extended periods of time, you're going to fall asleep. You want to, amen, you're going to miss, you know, the portions of the reading that you need. To under, you're not going to comprehend nothing because you're not used to sitting still. And there's some people of God, they have no stamina. They don't know how to sit still. They don't know how to wait on God. They don't know how to endure. If they're in a season of conflict, it ain't, the, it ain't, this can't be God. And I'm telling you, there'll be some seasons, it is all God. There'll be some seasons you want to have to be in a marriage where you feel like you married to Satan's son-in-law, Satan's daughter-in-law, and you still got to serve. You got to serve with gladness. You got to show up on time. You still got to worship. God is not, he's not releasing you from life because you, you're dealing with a trial. You don't, and I preach to me, you don't get a pass for pain. 
Jesus didn't say, ouch, this sword hurts. This crown hurts. I'm coming down, y'all. I'm coming down. No. You're going to have to learn how, endure hard, how to endure hardness. If you want to be made out of something, you're going to have to go through something. And, and see, that's the part uh, of the gospel that we don't get. This is not some cotton candy, you know, McDonald's ice cream gospel. This, this is a hard way. This is an offensive way. This is a warring way. And if you don't know how to, first of all, conquer yourself, my people, wonderful people, you're going to find yourself in cyclical patterns, or cyclical is a pattern, you're going to find yourself in patterns of, of repetitive patterns in, wilder, in the wilderness, going around in circles. When you should be coming out, going into Jordan, you're making your third lap. Come on now. You should be past some of this stuff. I would sit in church and I'm like, well, they're going to preach on me today. And I would just sit there. And while they're preaching, honey, I would have my Bible doing a Bible study. And I'd be like, yep, mm-hmm. Because you know what? You've got to learn how to guard your spirit and not let the enemy push you off of your post. My daughter played volleyball last uh, this year. And, um, no, softball, excuse me. And, uh, you know, you, you better stay on post or you're going to get, they're going to um, tag you out. You understand what I'm saying? You get off post and get caught. Y'all know how did you get caught between the, between the, um, the, um, the, the, what do you call the things? The, um, oh God, I can't think of thing. Anyway, base. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You get caught between bases if you want to. You stay on your base until you're free to run. And, and when you run, you better get to another base. You understand what I'm saying? You get to another base or you get the home run, but you can't be in the middle because you're going to get tagged out. You understand what I'm saying? So praise God. Um, I love you guys. I've come to you from my heart, from sincerity. I always pray before I come and bring this word because I want it to come out of a pure place. I want it to reach you where you are. I don't want to come and, and be so you know high above you that you, you can't understand what I'm saying. I want to come right where you are and meet you right there in your situation and, and tell you what the Lord is saying and, and, and how he wants you to come through it. God is, is invested in you. He has invested a lot in you and he wants you to come out strong. Okay. But you're going to have to deal with these emotions, these runaway emotions. And you're going to have to learn how to stop starting over. Okay? Learn how to deal your heel in the sand, ladies and men. Learn how to stand flat-footed. And just say, you know what? Bring it. Just bring it. Whatever I have to go through, God, just bring it. You know, if, for me to come out of this season, I, I, you know, I, I got to come out of this. Some of you are dealing with seasons of poverty. Poverty, never have enough, never have enough. But then look, look at the job track record. You understand what I'm saying? Or, you know, look at you look at your spending. Look at look at what's happening. At what point are you going to come out of the woods and say, you know what, I, I, I'm, we're going to do it better this time? Do it better. Relationship cycles. You know, career cycles. Go forward. Amen. God's got some tremendous things for you, but it's in a place called forward. So you guys be blessed and um, pray our strength in the Lord. Amen. And go back over this word. Uh, you can't share it from here. This is a private group. Okay, because these teachings is not for the masses. It's for grown folk because I don't have time to explain a whole lot of stuff. I'm assuming when we come on here, I'm assuming that you should know. All right. You, you should know. Um, so, you know, if I take it live on my page. I've got a lot of babes in Christ and unsaved people. And they'll, they'll you know, just, it'll distract me from from getting to the meat of it. So I don't this is not a public page. It's a private page. If you need to share it with somebody, you're not going to be able to share it from this group. You're going to have to either add them in. And I'll bring them in, and they can watch it, and they can leave. You, nobody is compelled to stay. You can just get any of one message and get out. Okay. Um, some of these I do upload to YouTube, so you want to might want to check out the YouTube channel, and I share it from there. I also have a podcast. I'm sharing some messages um, there too, so that it can be shared abroad. Um, but when I'm doing a live, you know, it's, it, it will be too distracting to have a whole lot of people on arguing and fighting, and I, I just, <laughs> I, I, hey, I don't have a grace to argue with people. That's I don't do that. Um, so I'm with you all. I'm trusting your spirit. Amen. Trusting you to understand the material that's presented here and, and depending on you to pray me through as I'm ministering because certain areas we hit pockets, we hit things. And, um, you know, and I can feel some of that. Some of you are, you know, dealing with like, man, that's me. I'm going through that and crying and carrying on where you are. I can feel that in the spirit, but I can't back off of it. That's like surgery. I, I can't back off it because it hurts you. Some of this is what we need to grow. Amen. So I got to go. I got to get to work and get my life together. I love you guys. And I appreciate this opportunity to share um, the word with you. Thank you for being a part of this group. And um, if you know somebody who needs to hear this word, 
add them into the group, okay? Don't try to share it from here because they're not going to see it. Add them in, and they can always leave after they finish um, viewing. Amen? All right. Love you all, and have a blessed day. If you want to, um, a one-on-one, somebody's asking a question about that. Um, I work two jobs. I'm getting ready to take on another full-time job in another week or so, so we may have to change our timings. I I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Um, but email me, pdl.ministries at yahoo.com, and, and just share whatever. No one gets has access to that but me. Um, I'm a woman of God and integrity, uh, so I'm not going to share your stuff, okay? Um, email me, provide your number, but I'm telling you right now, and it may be a minute before I can call you, it's quicker for me to respond by email because I can do that late at night when I'm up praying or what have you. Um, but if you're looking for me to call you, I'm, I'm just being honest with you. It's, it may be a minute. Okay. Um, so we may have to communicate, you know, through the letters like Paul did with the churches through the letters. Uh, but anyway, you have access to that. I'll go ahead and tag that in my, um, notes yes my church is in charlotte the love church charlotte is in charlotte north carolina 5201 suite d nations ford road sundays at 11 um wednesdays at 7 you all are always welcome to come please let me know when you come i have folk come and go and then they inbox me i enjoyed myself i'm like i didn't even know you came so let me know you know let me know um when you come visit so we can take a selfie together or so i can pray over you or just hug you um you know let me know when you come to visit but you're always welcome to visit i don't minister every sunday i share the pulpit with my spiritual daughter um she's a pastor amen and so you know we we um minister every other sunday so i do have a calendar when i'm ministering i can share that with you it's on our website and you can see exactly when i'm in she's an awesome woman of god too now don't get me wrong but if you're looking to hear me minister i only minister every other sunday so you you know if you're looking for that then um go to my website tlcor tlcor.org but i'll post all that here and um yeah but please email me i would love to hear from you i love y'all's feedback um please email me and again i'll tag everything here or if you go to the um description of the page all of my information is there the phone number those of you that want to give i don't ever charge but if you feel hey this woman god's been blessing me man she's awesome i just want to sow a seed okay you're welcome to do that i've got a cash app there i've also written several books you can go ahead and purchase a book and i write just like i talk so it's very down to earth, easy. You can teach it, reteach it, what have you. Anyway, I got to go. <laughs> Love you guys. And we'll be back at the point. Lamentation study people next week, okay? So go ahead and get your reading in and let's look at um, prophetic intercession. Let's talk about that for a little bit. All right. Love you guys. And we'll see you at the next appointed time. God bless you.